You know, the last time we spoke about Arlecchino, it was in patch 4.1, and as I went to check it out, I remember sometimes we start off our videos with some nifty little trope. The unflagging and heroic captain. And finally, seated at the zenith of priorities are the Seraphim. Beings of wings with radiant flame and celestial choir, they sing God's name, the Ars Goetia. Yeah, for the Arlecchino one, it was a longer than usual poem me and a friend wrote. In motley hues, a jester skips, a harlequin with playful quips, a mask of mirth, a heart unknown, he dances in a world his own. With nimble feet and eyes that gleam, he weaves through life a fanciful dream, and jest in jest he finds his truth, a merry heart, a soul uncouth. Uh, but yeah, given she's not here and I'm not coming up with something better than that on my own, here's uh, the five lines about Arlecchino and iambic pentameter. I write this without shame. If Arlecchino be thy name, then my flesh is but a game. Yes, I long for relations with thee. Arlecchino, O oh God, why dost thou grasp at a phallus? This is not what I meant. O oh God, O oh God, O oh God. <laughs> I, I tried, man. Claire, if you see this, I am so sorry. <laughs> Arlecchino has officially been drip marketed, so I figured now would be a good time to go over all we know about her to remind people how interesting her lore is both in and out of game. I mean, given she's the fourth ranked Harbinger, she could very well end up being one of, if not the strongest character in the game lore-wise, given she's just outside of the top three who have power rivaling the gods. However, outside of the game is where things get especially interesting, given the Commedia dell'arte suggests there could be a possible love interest between herself and Columbina, but not just that, there are some interesting things we learned in her intro card. Piero was the one to give her her quote, stating, Fate grants favors to no one. Only those who would fight it with every ounce of their being may earn the right to challenge it. Alongside the quote, it's revealed her constellation is that of Ignis Purgatorius. It's this one right here, and it's Latin for purifying fire. However, this is where things get even more interesting. The word Arlecchino not only has close ties to the Commedia dell'arte, which we'll get into in a bit, but also the Divine Comedy, a different Italian book. It details Dante's journeys through the afterlife in hell, purgatory, and heaven. In hell, there is a demon named Alecchino, which is derived from the word Arlecchino or Harlequin. Alecchino resides in the eighth circle of hell reserved for fraud and deception. Every soul here was placed for the crime of deceiving and using others for their own personal gain, which is reminiscent of how our very own Arlecchino is described. I've got nothing against people who have their own agendas. I myself joined the Fatui to get more experience in combat. But I don't like her at all. If she stood to benefit from betraying others, she'd turn against the Tsaritsa in a heartbeat. There isn't a sane bone in her body. Also, are you curious what happens to those who end up in the eighth circle of hell? Let this be a warning to all those who would try and further themselves in life through duplicitous means. In the eighth circle of hell, it's divided into many sections, such as the second, where flatterers are buried in sewage and feces, and the third, where simonists, people who abuse church power, are buried upside down and their feet are burned, and the fourth, sorcerers and fortune tellers are forced to walk around with their heads on backwards, and the fifth, the politically corrupt are buried in boiling tar, and the sixth, religious hypocrites are forced to wear torturously heavy heavy church ropes. In the seventh, snakes bind thieves' hands behind their backs and torture them in various ways. In the eighth, those who lied for personal gain are turned into living flames. In the ninth, those who sow division walk in an endless circle where they pass a certain demon. It chops their head and limbs off. Their wounds slowly heal as they walk around again and the demon chops them off once more. In the tenth and final ditch, counterfeiters are punished with various diseases such as scabies, itching, thirst, and leprosy. So think next time before you dare tell a lie, you filthy fucking sinner. <laughs> Also, fun fact about Alecchino, his job was to guard the fifth lair, which is where all the people were thrown into boiling tar, and ensure they wouldn't escape the pots. If people tried, he'd be armed with grappling hooks and barbs to tear them to pieces as they tried to escape. What the fuck were we talking about before all of this? 
Uh, Arlecchino, oh yeah, quotes. Uh, however, what's odd is in the Divine Comedy, Purifying Fire is most closely associated with Purgatory, which is a separate book from Inferno. Purgatory is where souls go to be purified of their sins, and parts of Purgatory, such as the Seventh Terrace, there is literally a wall of fire that you have to cross to be purified. But here's the thing I don't get. It, why is Arlecchino's motifs overlapping with two different parts of the Divine Comedy? The difference between Hell and Purgatory in the book are pretty staunch. To end up in Hell, you need to have either committed a cardinal sin or done something so horrific to ruin your relationship with God. Whereas for a soul to end up in Purgatory, it's usually a venial sin that leads most people here. Hell is where people go to be punished for their sins. Purgatory is where people go to be purified of their sins. Before ending up in Paradise, it could be in Genshin Impact, Arlecchino has done something horrible in her past life that she's trying to atone or purify or cleanse her soul of. That thing could be whatever happened between herself and the previous head of the House of the Hearth, Arlecchino. You see, one day, whilst Arlecchino was but a, a wee little child in the House of the Hearth, she clashed with the then Arlecchino, superseding her to become the new Arlecchino. A lot of fucking Arlecchinos, man. Just, come on, guys. <laughs> There's so many names in the universe. <laughs> you could have just called yourself Dave. <laughs> Man. The incident was described as a serious clash, however the details beyond this are a complete mystery. Why they fought, and what happened to the previous knave, have yet to be answered. It's worth pointing out that by all accounts, the previous knave was a terrible person who probably had it coming given she she loved recruiting orphans. Oh fuck me, this was like her favorite thing in the world, bro. It'd bitch be the first one on the fucking seat of the accident to immediately swoop the freshly born orphan to start. Alright, niggas, start serving Saritas! <laughs> I mean, take for instance what happened with Fremine and the previous knave. She told him his mother was still alive, when in actuality, Fremine's mother was dead. I, she's an evil bitch, I'm telling you, man. Just, just, just wait, it has a happy ending, however. Interestingly, when our Arlecchino found out about this, she was enraged and finally told Fremine the truth that his mother was dead. Arlecchino's apparent no tolerance for lies is at odds with her inspirations in the Divine Comedy, and namely, her archetype in the Commedia dell'arte, in which Arlecchino is said to be constantly thwarting her master's plans so as to continue pursuing her love interest, Columbina. I mean, hell, her title of the knave just means dishonest person. When will this bitch start lying, man? Whether any of this actually translates over to the game, I suppose we'll have to wait and see, because some of the Harbingers are reminiscent of their Commedia dell'arte counterparts, such as Pantalone, who's rich in both, and Sandrone, who has connections with puppets in both. However, some, well, hopefully, are not, such as Capitano, who in the Commedia dell'arte is said to be faking his skills, presenting himself as proud and strong, claiming he's never lost a battle, when in actuality, He's a bitch-made cuck. But Arlecchino did refer to herself as a servant of Her Majesty. I am a servant of Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. And given Arlecchino appears to have some connection to the afterlife with Purgatory, and the fact that Columbina may be closely tied to death, it's not completely outside the realm of possibility that she's closely tied with her Commedia dell'arte counterparts, and thus through it, Arlabina? Yeah, Arlabina can flourish, and let's not forget, Child did state she'd turn on the Saritza, which is her master, in a heartbeat. Although Arlabina has never really been, <laughs> uh, I don't know, teased through the Lazo Trail, nor has any real indication been made that there's anything going on between them, it could be some like on the sly shit, you feel me? Regardless, this is pretty much all that we know about Arlecchino right now. Obviously, she's coming out next patch, so we're gonna have a lot more information, not only on her, but on the other Harbingers. I just thought it was interesting that finally her constellation has been confirmed, and it reveals a close tie with Purgatory. I truly wonder what her connection with the afterlife is. To the topic of her strength, however, given her links with the afterlife, I wonder especially if she's even a human. Now, we know at one point she was just a kid, so she does age normally at the very least, but with that said, she is the fourth ranked Harbinger just outside the big three, so I wonder if there's a big cliff between herself and them, or she's simply on the cusp of greatness. The guy Nico spoke of the sixth ranked Harbinger like he was the final boss, so I wonder how she'd feel about the fourth ranked Harbinger. She could very well be the strongest non-god, even stronger than probably Venti and Nahida, no bullshit, just because keep in mind, she no hezzy went after who she thought was the Hydro Archon, which means she's supremely confident in her abilities if she's willing to attack a god all on her own. In any case, we're one patch away from finding out everything. But god damn, this is gonna be one 
4.5 is one boring ass patch, man. But something, something, you wait, and then something, so, I don't know, something with the lamb and Jesus Christ. 